Hi everyone! Welcome to my channel. Always remember, ignorance of the law, excuses, no one. This is Legally Engineer. Yung Apanchans, yung earthquake, mm -hmm. and yung panel of arbitrators, yan yung third person. So, and dapat pareha sila. Kaya mix. And in that case, sabi natin, that's a mixed condition and both conditions must take place in order that the building but building contractor's will obligation will repair will, will arise. arise. So, yun yung mixed condition as yung sabi natin. Okay. So, let's now go to impossible conditions under Article 1183. Mm -hmm. So, sabi, impossible conditions, those contrary to good customs or public policy, and those prohibited by law shall annul the obligation which depends upon them. If the obligation is divisible, that part thereof which is not affected by the impossible or unlawful condition shall be valid. The condition not to do an impossible thing shall be considered as not having been agreed upon. Mm -hmm. So, itong Article 1183 kanina, mm -hmm. it refers to a suspensive condition, yun na pag usapan natin. And it applies only to cases where the impossibility already existed at the time the obligation was constituted. However, oh, if the impossibility arises, after the okay, creation of the obligation, then Article 1266 governs na sinasabi mm -hmm. dito. Ito okay. yung provisions on contracts. Yes, contracts uh -oh. na yun. And therefore, um, meron tayo dito pag-uusapan na, again, uh, different kinds of conditions, particularly impossible conditions. Meron tayong physical impossible and legal impossible. So, yung physical impossible conditions, ito yung when in the nature of things, they cannot exist or cannot be done. Mm -hmm. Example, Jen, I will give you 10,000 pesos provided it will not rain in the Philippines for two years. Wow. <laughs> that is physically impossible. Laging maulan dito sa Philippines. So, it's uh, physically impossible. Now, the second kind is legally impossible conditions such yes. as uh, when they are contrary to, to law, law, morals, good customs, customs, public order, order and public policy. policy. For example, um, um, Maria will give Juan 10,000 pesos if Juan will kill Pedro. Pedro. So, ang nangyari doon ay may promise na magbayad ng 10,000 provided na papatay si, uh, si Juan. Papatay that, si is pa, that is physically possible. Possible, oo, physically, pwede, oo, yes. Oo, na pwede patayin, pero but it's, it's legally, legally impossible. impossible. Kasi, bawal. <laughs> oh, by law, bawal. And therefore, uh, the, that would make the obligation void yes, for kaya, being legally impossible. Kasi, the condition there, thereby. Yeah. Now, ano ba yung effect? Yeah, no, una ako, no? Ano yung effect of impossible, impossible conditions? Condition. So, ang effect niyan, pwedeng yung conditional obligation is void, pwede namang conditional obligation is valid, at saka meron ding only the affected obligation is void. So, isa -isa natin yan, no? So, okay. sa unang sinabi ni Attorney Uy na the conditional obligation is void. Impossible mm -hmm. conditions annul the obligation which depends mm -hmm. upon them. Ibig sabihin nun, mm -hmm. yung uh, nilagay din ang condition na impossible, either legally impossible or, or physically, physically impossible, i-annul daw nun or extinguish niya yung, yung obligation, obligation which depends upon them. them. And both the obligation and the condition in this case our boy. Kaya yes. kanina no example niya yung Maria will give 10,000 pesos to Juan provided Juan will kill Pedro. Mm. Oh, so that is legally impossible. Void yung condition because that is illegally impossible dahil bawal pumatay is against the law at saka yung obligation is likewise void because it is subject to an impossible condition. Yes. And the reason behind this, ang mm -hmm. sabi niya ng batas, is that the obligor knows that his obligation cannot be fulfilled mm -hmm. because it's legally or physically impossible. Possible. And therefore, there is no intention on his part to comply like with his obligation. And that makes conditional obligation void. void. Now, doon naman sa sinabi ni Attorney Oy na yung conditional obligation ay valid. valid. Pwede ba talaga na magkaroon yes. ng conditional obligation na valid even if it's the, the condition there is impossible? Yes. Attorney Oy. Dapat daw, the condition is negative or the condition is not to do an impossible thing. Mm -hmm. so, um, Consequence non, it is disregarded and the obligation is rendered pure and valid. 
The condition is always fulfilled when it is not to do an impossible thing so that it is the same as if there were no condition. Mm, malimbawa, sinabi ko na uh, si, si Maria, Maria will be given uh, 10,000 pesos by Juan if, uh, uh, um, let's say, Maria will not kill Pedro. If Juan will not kill Pedro. So in that case, the condition is, is not to do an uh, legally impossible thing, uh, thing. Uh, which is not to kill Pedro talaga naman mm -hmm. uh, oh. pag, ginawa, pag hindi mo ginawa yan eh valid yung condition oh, oh, valid. valid din yung obligation ni Maria to give 10,000 pesos to Juan so negative pag negative so, both condition and the obligation are valid so the only time that a conditional obligation based on an impossible condition will be valid is if the condition is in the negative, negative. or not to do an impossible thing. Take note of that. Alright, so Attorney Oy, we are discussing the effects of impossible conditions and there are four instances nga, and yes. na tayo sa pangatlo. Uh -huh. And yung pangatlo, sinasabi dito na only the affected obligation is void and it happens if the obligation is divisible. divisible. So only the part thereof not affected by the impossible condition shall be uh, uh, valid. valid. Okay. Uh, divisible kasi it is susceptible of partial performance. Fulfillment. Fulfillment. So, example nito is, I will give you 10,000 pesos if you sell my land. lot. O, land. O, pag binanta mo yung lupa, bibigyan kita ng 10,000. Tapos din ang kagayon. O, kaya naman, oh. sabi ko, o, o kaya, uh, papatay, uh, I will give you my car if you would kill Pedro. Pedro. Mm. O, o. So, in that case, ang um, ang mm -hmm. obligation ni Attorney Uy, dalawa yung dalawa. sinasabi niya. Okay. Magbibigay siya ng 10,000 kapag nabenta yung kanyang lupa at magbibigay din siya ng kotse niya kapag napatay si Pedro. Si Pedro. O pag pinatay. Pag pinatay, pinatay si Pedro. Uh, <laughs> so in that case, susceptible ba yan to uh, partial fulfillment? Yes. Divisible yeah. obligation. Divisible yan. yan. So valid dyan yung bibigyan ko ng 10,000 kapag naibenta yung lupa. Oh, that is valid. Yeah, as, no? That's uh, oh, oh. physically and yeah. legally possible. Unaffected yun. Unaffected. Ang, yung, ang void dyan, yung magbibigay ako sa'yo ng car provided, you will kill Pedro. Mm -hmm. That is uh, legally impossible. So, our fourth um, example when it comes to the effect of impossible condition is May instance, only the condition uh, is only the condition is void. Ano ba yan? Natin? If the obligation is a pre-existing obligation and therefore does not depend upon the fulfillment of the condition which is impossible, only the condition is void. Mm -hmm. Ito na naman yung pre-existing. Teka, ano ba ibig sabihin ng pre-existing uh, ano, obligation? So, uh, bago, before you impose the condition, there is already a valid and existing obligation. Meron ibig sabihin, na. yung condition is merely an afterthought. So, nung una tayo nag-usap sa obligation oh, oh, oh. natin, wala yan. Wala, oh, oh. wala yan. Pinahabol mo lang. Mm, pinahabol mo mm -hmm. lang. Okay, so, so uh, what's the rule? Sa example natin, halimbawa, si debtor ay nag-incur siya ng obligation in the amount of 10,000 pesos in favor of si the creditor. Uh -oh. If the creditor later agreed to kill, for example, X, X. before the debtor pays him, then the condition to kill X is void because, again, it's legally impossible, Possible. but not the, the pre-existing pre obligation of the debtor to pay. Oh, because the situation here is may utang lang naman si debtor kay creditor niya 10,000 pesos. Pero later on, nung nakapangutang siya, sabi sa kanya ni creditor, patayin mo or you kill X before you pay me. Mm -hmm. Bago mo ko bayadan, anin mo muna si X? Mm -hmm. Tumba na natin. <laughs> Tumba na natin si X. Yes, Tumba so, mo si X. So, in that case, the uh, pre-existing obligation of D to pay the creditor is valid. Mm -hmm. Only the legally impossible condition imposed by the creditor to kill X is void. Mm -hmm. And take note, guys, that just because um, na-invalidate natin yung mm -hmm. uh, condition, which is to kill X, that doesn't mean uh, na extinguish na yung obligation ni debtor yes. to pay 10,000 pesos to the creditor because that is valid and subsisting. Yes, yeah, so you check the facts. Yes. Okay, so the are article 1184. Yes. In 1184, this is something to do with the potestate 
Pas, sorry, positive okay. condition. The article uh, 1184, it refers to a positive suspensive condition. Yes. The happening of an event at a determinate time. I and in this case, sabi doon, the obligation, obligation is, is extinguished. Extinguished, provide as soon as the time expires without the event taking place or as soon as it has become indubitable that the event will not take place although the time specified has not yet expired. Mm, so, example niyan, halimbawa si uh, Chris obliges uh, himself to give Jason 10,000 pesos if Jason will marry Melai before Jason reaches the age of 23. 23. Okay, so, himayin natin yan kasi magandang example yan. No? So, in this case, um, Chris is liable if Jason marries Melay before he reaches the age of 23. Oh, kasi na sinabi niya. Ni Chris. So, Chris is liable if Jason marries Melay before he reaches the age of 20. Kasi na-comply naman niya yung yes. uh, positive suspensive condition. Correct. What if, uh, would there be an instance wherein Chris would not be liable? Yes. Chris is not liable if Jason marries Melay at the age of 23 or after he reaches the age of 23. Mm -hmm. So, ibig sabihin, ang example kasi natin, magiging liable lamang si Chris Okay, J to give Jason 10,000 pesos if napakasalan niya si Melay before, before. mag 23 years old si Jason. Mm -hmm. So bef kapag napakasal si Jason kay Melay ng 22, 22 years old, Ay, 22. 22 years old, liable si Chris, Chris. to give 10,000. Pero kung nagpakasal si Jason kay Melay, and si Jason is uh, 23 years 23 old. 23 years old and above. Mm -hmm. Hindi na liable si Chris. Yes, Extinguished na. Yes, the operative word sinasabi. there is before reaching the age of 23. So kung pinakasalan niya si Mele, at the age of 23, you're older than 23, then Chris is no longer Yes, kasi uh, liable. yan na yung as soon as the time expires without the event taking place. Na-expire na yun, di na siya 23 eh. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, that, naka 23 yes. na siya and above, hindi pa na napapakasalan si Melay. So, extinguish na yung obligation ni Chris. Mm -hmm. oh. Kasi it's it's impossible na to happen. Oh, oh, it's impossible. Or the the time expires without the event, taking yung place. wedding taking place. Yes. So, however, in, uh, another case naman na pwede mangyari uh -oh. dito is that if Jason dies at the age of 22 uh -oh. without having married Melay, oh, yeah. then in that case, would Chris be liable? No, hindi na. Kasi uh, 23 mm. yung, yung usapan. Eh, namatay na. Mm -hmm. no, before Jason could reach the age of 23, namatay na siya. Mm -hmm. So, ang sabi dyan, sa number 2, it has become indubitable that the event will not take place although the time specified has not yet expired. O, oh, ano yan, hindi pa nangyayari yun, hindi pa nakaka-23 si Jason, pero indubitable, o sure na, na hindi, no, hindi na pwede mangyari because of his death. Hindi na pwede yung patay. Oo, oh, oh, that is void. <laughs> yes. So, take note of uh, 1184. Yes. Let's proceed with Article 1185. Oh, ito naman counterpart to ng 1184. Yung 1185, the condition that some event will not happen at the determinate time shall render the obligation effective from the moment the time indicated has elapsed or if it has become evident that the event cannot occur. If no time has been fixed, the condition shall be deemed fulfilled at such time as may have probably been contemplated, bearing in mind the nature of the obligation. So this one is the negative condition. Mm -hmm. The previous article, it's about positive condition. condition. And this provision again speaks of a negative condition that an event will not happen at a determinate time. Uh -huh. And the obligation shall become effective and yeah, binding. Yan naman yung effect niya. Yung Una. obligation shall become effective and binding. Yung kanina sa positive condition, the obligation will be extinguished. extinguished. Okay. So dito, the obligation shall become effective and binding from the moment the time indicated has elapsed without the event taking place. And pangalawa, from the moment it has become evident that the event cannot occur although the time indicated has not yet elapsed. Okay. So, if no time is fixed in this case, then the circumstances shall be considered to determine the intention of the parties. And this rule may also be applied to a positive condition. Now, punta natin yung example nito. Kasi, 
para ma-differentiate natin siya doon sa positive condition. Halimbawa, si Chris binds herself to give Jason 10,000 pesos if Jason is not, not yet married. married to Melai on December 30th. Alright, so in this case, uh, ang pinakaiba nila is that this one is in negative condition because not yet married. Yes. Kanina kasi is that if An, an obligation would, to do. An obligation to do. Oh, Kaya positive. Kanina kasi is uh, if Jason would marry, Melai would marry. So that's a positive, positive. condition. Now, negative kasi not, would not marry. Uh -oh. So, um, would would the uh, Chris be liable to Jason uh, if, if ever uh, Jason would marry Melai on December 30 after New Year? So Chris is not liable to Jason if Jason would marry Melai on December 30 or prior thereto. Kasi nasabi, ano, uh, magiging niya o, o, dapat hindi niya pakasalan on December 30. Oh, so, kung pakasalan niya uh, uh, before December 30, it means that Chris will not be liable. Mm -hmm. Kasi hindi niya na-fulfill yung uh, negative, negative condition. Negative mm condition. -hmm. Uh -huh. Now, um, if uh, Chris would be liable naman to Jason if on December 30, for mm -hmm. example, Jason is not married to Melai. Yeah, or no, oh. if Jason marries Melai after December 30. No, okay. Ibig sabihin lang ito, si Chris magiging liable kay Jason kapag hindi niya pinakasalan si Melai on December 30. Uh, hindi niya pinakasalan. Which na, in that case, na-fulfill niya yung negative condition. Yes. Eh, hindi na nga pinakasalan noong, noong December 30. Magiging, uh, the condition is fulfilled upon the expiration of the time indicated, which is December 30. So, magintay ka muna, Jason. My advice to you is you wait until December 30. Tapos, after noon, December 31, pwede na. Pwede mo na pakasalan para mabigyan ka ni Chris ng 10,000 pesos. So, take note of that. Now, so, Suppose si Melay ay namatay on November 20. Mm -hmm. Namatay si Melay. Namatay si Melay ng November 20. Without, without having been married to, uh, to Jason. Jason. So it means it is evident that the occur will not that the event will not occur even though the time indicated has not yet elapsed. Oh, hindi pa nangyayari yung December 30. Pero namatay naman nung November 20. Oh, okay. Anytime naman from November 20 to December 30, uh, Jason would not be able to marry yes. Melee anyway. Had Jason died on December 31, liable si Chris. Oh, oh. Kasi nag-expire yung time eh. Oh, na hindi niya pinakasalan si Mela, tapos namatay siya ng December 31, liable to give 10,000. Okay. Take note of the positive and negative conditions. Yes. Now, Article 1186. Um, yeah, the condition shall be deemed fulfilled when the obliger voluntarily prevents its fulfillment. Yeah, no. So, yung Article 1186 talks about the constructive fulfillment of suspensive condition. Constructive kasi wala namang actual fulfillment Implied by love. the debtor. Hindi oh. naman talaga nag-fulfill si debtor ng kanyang obligation. Pero the law treats... Uh, pero the law considers it to be fulfilled, deemed fulfilled. Kasi nga, because the obliger voluntarily prevents its fulfillment. So there are three requisites for the application of Article 1186. So take note guys, ha? pag sinabi natin requisites ng batas for the applicability ng uh, total provision, oh, oh, these are the elements that must concur in order for you to apply the total provision. In the absence of one or two or any of the elements, then hindi siya applicable. Mm -hmm. So, there are three requisites. First, the condition must be suspensive. suspensive. So, kung ang condition mo ay resolutory, then this would not, not be applicable. Uh -huh. The obligor actually prevents the fulfillment of the condition. So, yung obligor, prevent niya para hindi mangyari nga yung condition, para hindi siya maging liable. And he acts voluntarily. Very important. Dapat voluntary uh, yung kanyang pag-prevent nung uh, so, happening of the condition. So, ang pinipagin sa Article 1186, uh, such provision punishes the obligor for preventing the fulfillment of the obligation. So the law considers na, na kahit walang fulfill, actual fulfillment by the debtor, dahil sa kanyang prevention of the fulfillment, it is as if na-fulfilled. 
and he's liable. And attorney, oy, does the law require that the obliger actually acts with malice or fraud before masabing applicable itong Article 1186? So under Article 1176, wala namang na-mention na kailangan may, may malice or fraud as long as his purpose is to prevent the fulfillment of the condition. Because it is it's voluntary. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. And let's give an example to uh, shed light to the viewers, to the students that we have. Mm-hmm. Halimbawa, si Prince, he agreed to give a gente or a certain agent a 5% commission if the agent could sell Prince land at a certain price. So, para mabenta niya yung lupa niya, nag-commission siya ng ahente, ng agent, at ang promise niya, pag nabenta ng ahente, yung lupa niya, magbibigay siya ng uh, 5% commission. However, the agent found a buyer who definitely decided to buy the property. property. Oh, si AJ, mm-hmm. yung ahente, nakakita na mm-hmm. ng buyer. However, mm-hmm. dahil nga si Prince nalaman niya na nakakita na ng buyer si ahente, mm-hmm. para maka-evade or ma-avoid niya yung mag-buy ng 5%, 5% commission, commission, nag-direct uh, transaction na lang siya doon sa buyer, uh, buyer na meron oh. tayo at a lower price. So, para lang uh, mabawasan yung babayaran niya kay ehente na 5%, siya na lang. Dumirekta oh, na siya. Okay. So, ang question dito is that would Prince be liable to pay the 5% commission uh, to the agent based on the uh, original uh, agreement that they have? Attorney Uy, uh, how would you resolve this? Under Article 1186, the condition shall be deemed fulfilled when the obligor voluntarily prevents its fulfillment. So, ibig sabihin, yung condition imposed by Prince kay agent, kay agent na maghanap ng buyer para mapigyan ng 5% commission is deemed fulfilled. So, ibig sabihin, liable na si Prince to give a commission to the agent. Even though si agent, hindi siya talaga actually yung nagbenta. It is may constructive fulfillment. Yes. Kasi nga, guys, take note na present dito yung requisites. Una, the condition is suspensive. Suspensive. Alam natin yun. Oo. Tapos yung obliger actually yes. prevents. Sinong obliger dito? The obliger here is Prince. Prince. Principal. Si Prince, pinevent niya yung fulfillment of the condition kasi nag-direct transaction na siya dun sa, sa prospective oo. buyer. And, and his condition ngayon. is that the agent shall be able to negotiate with the buyer. Find the buyer. Which oo, oo, nagawa buyer. naman supposedly. No? Mm-hmm. And Prince acted voluntarily. So overall, 1186 applies in this case. And Prince cannot uh, uh, be absolved from his liability to pay the 5% commission to the agent. Okay. Because May constructive fulfillment. there is constructive fulfillment of the condition. condition. Alright, Attorney Uy, so we're just done discussing Article 1186 and now we will proceed with Article 1187 of the New mm-hmm. Civil Code. And if you will read the Article uh, 1187 in the New Civil Code, it has something to do with the retroactive effects of the fulfillment of suspensive conditions. So, so, it presupposes na na-fulfill na yung suspensive condition. Mm-hmm. And we are talking about the effects. 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 Mm-hmm. At ang effects daw ay retroactive. Retroactive. Okay. Ano ba yung retroactive? Uh, a retroactive, ibig sabihin, nagbabalik na daw ka. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yung effect, yung retro. Oh. Okay. May record ni, may record mo from the past, no? Mm-hmm. And in this case, halimbawa, para mas maliwanagan ng mga bata, in an obligation to give. Yes, magkaiba pa kasi ang effect kapag obligation to give at saka obligations to do or not to do. Mm-hmm. So let's first discuss yung retroactive effects when it comes to obligations to mm-hmm. give. So an obligation to give subject to a suspensive condition becomes demandable only upon the fulfillment of the condition. However, once the condition is fulfilled, its effects shall retroact to the day when the obligation was constituted. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, in this case, malinaw guys na kailangan i-differentiate natin yung um, demandability mm-hmm. ng obligation at saka yung uh, retroact Retroactive effects. effects. So, um, the, ibig sabihin lang, the obligation to give will not be demandable until and unless the na suspensive na condition, condition is fulfilled. But oh, once oh. the suspensive condition is fulfilled, ang effect niyan magre-retroact oh, oh. to oh, the day the obligation natin, is constituted. The, the obligation will arise kapag na-fulfill na ang suspensive condition. Mm-hmm. And ano naman yung rights? Kailan magsisimula yung mm-hmm. rights? Oh, ang sabi dyan, it will 
uh, start, it will commence from the time the obligation was constituted. So, uh, para so, ibig sabihin, na. hindi sa happening ng condition, mm. kundi kung kailan ba na-constitute yung yes. obligation. At yan yung ibig sabihin ng batas, na yung condition is just an accidental element yes. no, of a contract. Of Kasi course. hindi yun kasama sa contract uh, itself. Eh, no? The contract, it, the provision itself will exist even without the condition, yes, yes. the imposition of the All right. So, for example, attorney oh. Oy, halimbawa, on January 20, si mm-hmm. seller nag siya na ibenta yung parcel of land niya to the buyer for 100,000 pesos. Mm-hmm. Should the buyer lose a case involving the recovery of another parcel of land? land. Okay. Oh. However, on April 10, si seller binenta niya yung lupa to C, yes. the creditor. B subsequently lost yeah, the case on yeah, December 4. Okay. Okay. So let's analyze. Oh, yes, the analyze facts. natin yung facts mm-hmm. of the case. Una, merong original contracting parties in here, or yung obliger, obligee, si seller, and, buyer. and the buyer. Na pang nabenta ni, uh, ibebenta ni seller kay buyer yung parcel of land. Kapag si buyer, ang condition doon ay kapag si buyer Spire ay na, na, natalo. Sa, sa case, case involving another, another person. Parcel of land. So that's the suspense. So I'll take condition. note also of the date. Oh, Kasi oh, jan- yes. then January 20, so, nagkasundo si seller at si buyer na ibebenta ni seller yung lupa niya kay buyer provided si buyer is matalo dun sa kanyang ah, so, case. Alright. So that's the original ha. Now, ito yung nangyari subsequently. Oh, oh. April 10. Mm-hmm. Nung April 10, binenta ni seller yung lupa to another person named C. C. Okay. And in this case, subsec- uh, subsequent to that, on December 4 naman, nangyari, nangyari yung suspensive, suspensive condition, condition, which natalo. is natalo si B, C. B. doon C. sa kaso na mm. pending before the Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. So, tatlo ang dates dyan. Uh-huh. January 20, April 10, and December 4. Mm. Uh-huh. Now, in this case, before December 4. Uh-huh. Oh, before matalo before ma-fulfill yung suspensive condition which is natalo, natalo si K, sa case si B, si walang case. demandability Uh-oh. si B has no right to demand the sale of the land by S yes, kasi, kasi understandably mm-hmm. understandably hindi pa nangyayari yung suspensive condition mm-hmm. but when the condition however was fulfilled on December 4 uh, it, is, it is as if B was entitled to the yeah. land beginning January oh, 20. 20. Yan oh, kailan sila nag-usap here. when the contract was perfected? Ayun, dun entitled si B sa land. Mm. So, ibig sabihin, anong na ngayon mangyayari kay C? Mm-hmm. Kasi may pumasok na si C. Eh. Mm. Si C kasi, ka, naging kabatusap siya noong April 10. 10. So, ang mangyayari oh. dito, ang tanong, who has a better, better right? right? Would yes. uh, the buyer B uh, has would have the better right over C. So si B ang may better right mm-hmm. over the land. Why? Because under Article 1187, the effects of the happening of the suspensive condition retroacts from the time the obligation was constituted. Mm-hmm. So ibig sabihin, upon the happening of the condition on December 4, it is as if B, the buyer, is entitled to the parcel of land on January 20, from pala, from January 20. So from January 20, si B ang may-ari na nung parcel of land. So regardless or noong sale ni S kay C, noong April 10, si B pa rin ang may better right. Yes, but we have to caution you guys, no? Kasi in this case, it is required that under the property registration decree, yung promise ni seller to uh, to sell, sell the uh, property to must be annotated, uh, be, must be annotated uh, at the back of the, the certificate, certificate of title of property <laughs> para maging binding siya as against uh, C na meron tayo, okay. no? And, um... Yung encumbrance na kasi yun. Yes, may encumbrance. Kasi kung in good faith, si ano dyan, si... Si... C. C. Tapos walang... Kung good faith dyan, si C. Tapos hindi naman naka-annotate yung... Yung promise ni S kay B na ibebenta. Maaaring si C ang... Mag- 
uh, would have a better right over the game. Ang maging recourse na lang dito ni, ano, ni B is damage as against, for damages, uh, as against S. As is against S. I take note of that. Ha. Pero halimbawa, another curious case, di ba sabi natin, January 20, the constitute ng obligation sa seller okay. to the buyer. Mm-hmm. Now, on April uh, 10, um, na ben uh, pinamis na ibenta kay C. C. Uh, o oh, ibinenta. O oh, ibinenta, ibinenta kay, kay C. C. Tapos nung May 15, eto namang si buyer B ay ang ginawa niya, binenta niya rin yung lupa kay mm. D naman. Ayan. Mm. So parang nagkaroon ng double sale double na dito. Sale. No? So, paano ang double sale? Right um, kasi nga, dalawa yung napagbentahan. Uh-huh. Na ibenta kay si, tas na ibenta Pero na-fulfilled ba ni B? Hindi yung, pa. Nung no, May 15, hindi pa. Pero, pero subsequently, na, na-fulfilled nung December 4. Okay. So, attorney Uy, dun sa curious question na meron ako, who would have the better right? Is it D, the new buyer of B, or C, the buyer of, of original S. seller S? Oh. In that case, si D, yung buyer ni B, would still have a better right as against C. Since the sale by B will be considered valid. Reason. Why? Why Reason that valid? Reason naman, Article 1187. Kasi nga, ang owner na niyan, from January, it is as if, mm-hmm. from January 20, C, B, ang owner no parcel of land. Kasi, upon the fulfillment of the suspensive, suspensive condition. Kasi the word there is retroactive. retroactive. No, Retroactive ang effect niyan. Kaya again, uh, B would have a better... And it is wrong to say na December 4 lang naging entitled si B yes. kasi doon lang niya na-fulfill. No, kasi nga retroactive. That is in case of obligations to give. Take note of that. Yes. Now, in an obligation to do or not to do, with respect to the retroactive effect of the fulfillment of a suspensive condition in obligations to do or not to do, no, no fixed fix rule, rule is Ayan. provided. Ayan. No fixed rule. Oh. This does not mean, however, that in these obligations, the principle of retroactivity is not applicable. applicable. So the courts here are empowered by the use of sound discretion and bearing in mind the intent of the parties to determine, in each case, the retroactive effect of the suspensive condition that has been complied with. So okay. kapag so uh, obligation to give... Uh, may retroactive effects upon the constitution of okay. the obligation. Uh-huh. How about dito naman sa in obligations to do or not to do ang rule natin, sabi, no fixed rule is provided. However, so the rule is no fixed rule. Oh, no fixed rule. <laughs> the rule is no fixed rule. However, in some instances, pwede daw i-apply yung principle of retroactivity. Mm-hmm. Oh, pwede daw apply and Ma-apply yan ng courts taking into consideration the nature of the circumstances and the intention of the parties. Mm-hmm. Alright, so for example, attorney Oy, si Acosado. So Acosado obliged himself to condone the death of Abogado. Should Abogado win Acosado's case in the Supreme Court? Mm-hmm. So in this case, attorney Oy, for example, Abogado would be able to win. Uh, the case of Acosado in Supreme Court, then nagkaroon na ng fulfillment of the condition. Okay. In this case, Acosado shall not be entitled to the earned interests of the capital during the pendency of the condition. So, habang hindi pa nangyayari nga yung condition, hindi entitled. O, habang tumatakbo pa lang yung kaso, wala bang decision yung court na nanalo si Acosado. So, Naturally, may interest yun. Dapat, supposedly. Dapat. Oh, oh. Hindi entitled sa interest itong si Acosado kasi nga ang oh. intention of the parties ay to condone Don't or to extinguish, extinguish the debt. debt. And take note na nung at that time na naipanalo ni Abogado mm-hmm. yung case ni Acosado, magre-retroact yung effect nun at that time that there was a an condonation or there was an agreement as regards the condonation of the debt of Abogado to Acosado. And therefore, oh. at that time na kinondone, yung debt, debt na yun, supposedly, yung principal, hindi yun na yan nag-earn ng interest. interest during the pendency of the happening of the, the um, suspensive condition. So, take okay. note of that. So, this is a classic example of a um, obligation. an obligation to do or not to do. And With the, the retroactive effect as uh, the happening. Retroactive uh, effect is made applicable. Okay? So, take note of that. Ulitin lang namin that the rule there is that there is no fixed rule. Fixed rule. Like, hindi laging uh, retroactivity um, yeah, of the because the the court has the discretion, discretion no? to apply uh, whatever is just and um, fair. fair. <laughs> <laughs>